Hmm, get a tragic here. And welcome to something a little bit different. This is sort of like an announcement of something I discovered recently. And also, I'm going to play a game of Lord of the Rings. And I'm going to do that using a new tool that I've found. And it's awesome. Really awesome. Basically, do you guys know Jinteki.net? So, what is it? Jinteki. Yeah, so... Jinteki is the name of a faction inside Android Netrunner. And ages ago, someone invented this awesome online hub where you can play the game in your browser with people. They even host competitions here. They even have all the cards from the custom you know, sets that have been released by the community after FFG stopped doing Android Netrunner. I spent a lot of time on this website and it is awesome. It is seriously awesome. I should probably do some videos of me playing Android Netrunner with the new custom cards. Uh, if I could, you know, not get beaten soundly every time. But anyway, someone has done that for Lord of the Rings. And it's called dragoncards.com. Now, I will put the links in the description and everything. But be, just be careful. If you look carefully, it's dragon without an A. So it's dragon cards okay so it's spelt a little weirdly but this is the website check it out you can find it pretty easy through DuckDuckGo uh, if you just go uh, dragon cards lord of the lord of the rings lcg or something like that and it should pop up this is how I found it anyway. There you go. There's Dragon Cards link there at to Board Game Geek, which takes you to it. It's not hard to find, but or play Lord of the Rings LCG online. This is how I actually found it. And there you go, Dragon Cards link again. So whatever. The point is you come to this place and it allows you, just like Genetechie.net, to play Lord of the Rings in your browser, no installed software nothing you don't have to do anything you just have to make an account for free and log in awesome and because it's working in your browser you can play it on your phone you can play it on your pad probably can't play it on your phone for you know space issues but you could play it quite comfortably on a large you know like ipad or you know, android tablet or whatever and i'm just going to demonstrate how this works and get to like a tutorial but also just to play a game of Lord of the Rings because I have not played one in a long time. I had a couple of little games just to learn how to use this software and uh, let's get to it. Now the first thing is we just hit create room. I'm going to make it private and the reason I'm making it private is because I'm in Australia. The servers I believe are in New York which means they're a little slow for Australians, a bit of a lag thing here. So by making it private I don't have anyone jumping in to view my games, which I think will help. I think probably helps the the lag. Now I'm told that there's no lag for people who aren't on the other side of the earth, but I'm sure as this gets better, it'll be more efficient or whatever. It's completely playable. It's not really an issue. It's just something to be aware of. Okay, so you end up with this. So if you go to ringsdb.com, this is a online LCG sort of network of deck builders and cards. There's one for Arkham. There's one for everything. I think the only one it doesn't have one for is Call of Cthulhu, which really annoys me. But still, RingsDB, you can export cards, decks or whatever, just directly from here. So public decks like, say... You know this one here eagle cycle one i can just click on that and there's actually a button here that just says play on dragon cards and as long as the deck is set to be public you can just click that button and start playing now i've made a couple of my old decks here uh let's click on this one this is the one-handed ope deck from back in the day from my old channel right when I did the original playthrough of the physical cards. So let's try out this deck, see if I can get it running and see if I can beat the, the cards. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go download, save octagon file, and I'm gonna save that to my desktop. And then back over to Dragon Cards. I'm just gonna go menu, load, 
octagon deck and up she comes now the re oh that's a really good hand look at that that hand is out of in control we've got the light of valinor we've got viala we've got draw and we've got two sets of threat reduction all in the opening hand so unless uh Staging area is crazy. We have basically won this game already. Awesome. <laughs> uh, now, the reason why I couldn't click on play on dragon cards just from here is because this deck is not set to public. It can't access private decks. Now, there are ways to access private decks because uh, I know that you can do that with Arkham DB because of the Arkham Horror tabletop simulator mod can do it. But so far and at this point for dragon cards, they have to be public to use this button. But if you don't want to make your decks public, just do what I do. Just download a temporary file and you're ready to go. So once I've got this up, you just go menu, load quest, and you have a list of all the quests. And there's a huge amount of them. We've got uh, all sorts of stuff. They even have the entire Lord of the Rings campaign here, which goes all the way through here. That's like the custom made campaign. And I don't know if they have, and oh, there we are. There's the actual story of Lord of the Rings starting at Shadow Past expansion all the way to the Mount Doom expansion. I will be playing that shortly. I can't wait to play that. You know, I still haven't bought uh, the last three of these. I really should get that. And then otherwise my collection is going to be really have a huge hole in it. Anyway, for this test and this demo of the software, I'm going to do... Uh, Kazadoom and Daradelf, and I'm just going to do Into the Pit, which is the first of Kazadoom. I'm going to do Normal. And boom, that's it. It's as, it's as easy as that. We're now set up and ready to rumble. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press F11 to maximize my window and just get rid of all the extra stuff. And now we are ready to play. And it's just like a normal, you know, just like Lackey or something. Very, very easy to use. And you can press plus or minus to increase the size of your cards. And what I like to do is just to increase them up as far as I can until they get these little... See how if you make them too big, they start to cut each other off. You get this little drag line. I'm just going to go down one. There's one over here on the encounter deck, but I don't care because I don't really look at that. Just to make them a little bit bigger for me. Okay, so we're ready to go. Now... This is an insane hand. I mean, we've even got a minor in our hand. I mean, that this is such an insane hand. I feel like I should mulligan it just because the game is going to be over. But whatever, we'll keep going. Make it nice and quick. So we're going to play this whole quest. And through it, I'm going to tell you how I use this thing. Because you'll notice that there is all the you know, the, the, the turn orders and everything here. And this is quite important if you're playing multiplayer because you need to coordinate when you can do all your actions versus each other. But for solo, I don't need it. I mean, I'd love to be able to hide that completely. Uh, you know, you can change how many players you can have. So you can play multi-hand solo. You can play with other humans, obviously. It does it all for you. Very, very cool. So let's get started entering the mines. Oh, before we do, I'm just going to go... Open this and do this. Beautiful scotch. Whoa. Oh, I'm so excited. I haven't played Lord of the Rings for a long time. So cool. Okay, so firstly, the setup text has all been done for us. Okay, so we don't need to do any of that. So let's get into it. Entering the mines, into the pit. You have been sent by the White Council to Moria to deliver a message to Balin and his dwarven colony. No one has heard from him in a while. <laughs> we don't want a mulligan, so let's flip this sucker over. And I'm just going to do that by pressing the F key to flip. And basically, if you press the tab button, you get this list of all the hotkeys and pretty much everything you need to do to play this application is in here. You've got split into sections. You've got tokens and this is just adding tokens i'll tell you more about that later you've got card hotkeys you know this is for you know flipping things detaching things exhausting them readying them setting them to quest and you've got game hotkeys these are things like drawing counter card and so forth and so forth you also have multiplayer keys which i have not yet used this is useful for 
two-handed solo. I will be doing some two-handed solo games soon and figuring out exactly how these multiplayers work, but this is another set of hotkeys. But it's pretty straightforward, basically. So, entering the mines 1B. The doors of the east gate hang crooked on their hinges. The darkness inside the doorway is still and impenetrable, shutting out the last beams of a sinking sun. Reveal one encounter card per player and add it to the staging area. So, if I press tab, I'm into game hotkeys, you can see reveal encounter card is just E. So, let's just hit E. Out comes the encounter card. Boom! When revealed, each enemy and location in the staging area gets plus one and plus three if there's a dark. This does not have surge if there's no effect. And because there's nothing in the staging area, nothing happens. So, I'm just going to discard it. And to discard, if we look at card hot keys, it's just X. So, get rid of it. Now, the cave torch we have to attach to a hero too before we start. So, it's restricted, we attach it to, we're gonna put it to Gloin. Now, the way this works is, is if you kind of, if you move it over another card and it goes sort of semi-transparent, when you let go, it then attaches. That simple. Now, this is a very, very powerful thing. And it's, it's typical of Lord of the Rings, okay? So we're walking around the dark of Moria, it's pitch black. We pull out our torch and we can see right, right down the tunnel. And because we can see down the tunnel, it'll allow us to put three progress tokens on a dark location, but it has to be dark, otherwise the torch won't work, right? Very typical of how awesome and thematic this game is. But the problem is, if you hold up a torch in the middle of a dark tunnel, you're gonna bring attention onto you. So what you then have to do as a forced effect is you draw the top card of the encounter deck, and if it's an enemy, place it into the staging area. So very, very, very awesome thematic card and typical of Lord of the Rings, really. So now we're ready to run. So I'm just gonna go press the new round to start the game. Everyone gets a resource and we're ready to go. Uh, why did I draw another card? One, two, three, four, five, six. Do you start the card with seven cards? God, it's been so long. I thought you had five and drew to six. I know there's no hand limit. Oh, whatever. Stay with that, that's a very good card anyway. So, first thing we're going to do is spend one... Well, let's just quickly go through the heroes. Gloin is here for no other reason that I wanted to have a leadership hero who had low threat. Elrond over here has got a huge 13 threat. His ability is cool, but it's not being utilized in this game, in this particular quest. But it, basically, when he gets damaged, he also gains that much damage as resources. Glorfindel is just a beast. He's on a five threat. He's an amazing card for the early game. Three will, three attack, five, def uh, five health. He's a beast. But he has this annoying ability that means when he exhausts, you have to raise your threat by one. Now, threat reduction is not really an issue, especially in the early game of Lord of the Rings. So this is basically not even a problem. But it's even less of a problem because in our opening hand, we have Light of Villanor which means we can attach it to him and he doesn't have to actually exhaust to commit to a quest, which means because he's not exhausting, he doesn't raise his threat. So we can just basically spend one resource off him. So if I press tab, it loads up this thing. It says the key hotkey one is for resources. So if I press one and we place this out on top of him, bam, he's attached. Now, the way it works is if I, you might note if I press tab, there's no add resource minus resource for these buttons. This is a very cool little innovation, but it takes a little bit of getting used to. And what it is, if you hover over the mouse at the top of the card and press say the one key, it'll add a resource. But if it's at the bottom of the card, it'll minus the resources. So that is how the resource token thing works or any token works. So if I want a wound, I press three at the top. If I want to heal, it's three at the bottom. And all the different values, all the different tokens are here. And a lot of these I don't really use in most of the way I play, but the five key is very, very useful because this allows you to add uh, will 
or allow you to add threat tokens to change the quest calculation, which I'll show you later. So that's done. We don't really want to do anything else. There's no card we actually want to discard here, so I'm not going to. But what I am going to do is I'm going to spend one resource off Bloin and one resource off Elrond and place out Viala Ring. Or however, I don't know how to pronounce any of these words, so forget about it. <laughs> and this is an amazing card. This allows us to tap him and Elrond and put out a card for free. But it's kind of no use to us right now because I need to have him ready for blocking because he is a 3-2-3, three, three, three defense. It's amazing. And look at his abilities. You may spend resources from Elrond's resource pool to pay for any color ally. That's just super, super powerful. And after the character is healed by a card effect, it gets an extra heal. So this is just a super, super strong card. We've used all our resources. Now, if I press tab, you can see that there's a button that says Q, which is commit or uncommit from the quest. And shift Q is commit or uncommit from the quest without exhausting or readying. So if I hold down shift Q on this guy, it's committed to the quest, but he hasn't tapped. And if I look up here, you can see there's a number of little values. We've got the round value, we've got the staging errors, current value, and we've got the progress that we've currently made. And the reason why this says three is because we have Glorfindel committed to the quest and it has three. And this is live, this is the live update. So if I bring out a card, which I'm gonna do right now, and of course it is E, reveal encounter card to bring out a card. You blam. Oh, patrol leader, give me a break right off the bat. Very first card. That is bollocks. Oh, man. Okay, so as you can see, progress now says zero. You see? And that's because this is three threat. We're questing for three. So three minus three is zero. There's no progress. Now, in the staging, if I show you the staging thing, I can press the five hotkey. Remember five is add threat token and that'll add threat tokens. And you can see it's now going minus progress as in we gain that threat. And of course you can do it the other way as well. You can actually put minus threat on things. And I use that quite a lot and you can do it the other way around. So if I'm doing it on Glorfindel, see it's adding extra questing power. So that's a very, very handy thing. I love the way that this handles because the, the most annoying thing for me in doing this game is calculating threat all the time. It's just a pain or the counting, especially when you end up with cards all over your table. It takes me forever. So excellent that it does that for you. Anyway, long story short, we have got zero progress. So no threat gain, no threat loss. And now we have to decide whether to optionally engage this guy. And I think we are going to optionally engage. So we're going to let this come down to engage us and we're going to give it a shadow card with the S key. We're going to defend with Elrond and flip this card to look at it. You can see that it does not have any shadow effects. So he's attacking for four, defending at three, which means he gets one, uh, one wound, which is the three button, I think. Yeah. Remember it's all written in the hotkeys. Okay, then we're gonna attack with Gloin and attack with Glorfindel for five. And because this guy has three health, uh, three shield, we actually only get two damage. But before that, we have to do his ability. Because he's the patrol leader, he's got a little army with him. So we reveal the top card of the encounter deck. And if it is a enemy, it actually kills the enemy instead of him and he gets no damage. So let's reveal the next card from the encounter deck. It is an enemy. I'll just discard that. So no damage is placed upon the patrol leader. How annoying. Okay, and that's that. Let's refresh, you blammo. Okie dokie. There's not a lot we can do here. So let's quest with Glorfindel again. And this time we're also gonna do Nolder, which gives him an extra plus one to questing power. 
and we get to drop our threat by three. One, two, three. So we're questing for four. Let's bring out the encounter card, Yablamo. Okay, underground is up. While the goblin tunnels in the staging area, it gains forced after a goblin is revealed from the encounter deck, remove a progress token from the current quest card. Yikes, not too bad. It doesn't actually add any attack or defense, which is good, but we still have two progress tokens. So we'll whack on two progress to here. I'm then gonna defend again with Elrond. He gets a shadow card, we reveal it. Again, it doesn't have a shadow effect, so it's just a single wound. And then again, we attack for five. And this time, hopefully, when we reveal from the encounter deck, it's not gonna be a monster. It's not a monster. Uh, that's the wrong button. I don't know why. Oh, because, okay, so I hit discard and that the app recognized that this has victory points on it. So it asked me if I was sure I didn't want to send it to the victory display. So it, it is clever. But anyway, the point is that wasn't a monster. So we get two wounds. Okay, let's refresh. Your blammo. Okay, so we don't have a lot of choice here. We're going to go one, two of law and place out our healer. We really need some more of our attachments to come out. I do have this rune, but I don't want to discard any of the current cards in my hand, so I don't want to use it. This is draw two cards, discard one card. So we're pretty much just going to keep questing with the small amount of questing power we have. So we're just questing with three. We're going to draw one card from the encounter deck. Doom two and surge. So that's doom and surge and another goblin. Okay, this cannot be engaged for anyone who's got higher than 25 threat. So this guy just sits in the staging area until we can kill him with some kind of card effect because he will not engage unless we're over 37 threat, which is why I probably shouldn't have used this, uh, this thing. I don't know why I did. So you'll see now we're actually at negative two. I'm gonna just put our thread up by two. And once again, I'm going to, this time I'm going to tap my healer and heal two wounds. Now the, this guy actually only heals one damage on up to two different characters, right? But the reason we heal two is because he has the response after a character is healed by another card effect, heal one damage. So that means this guy can heal two wounds on two different characters every time he taps. Bonkers. Okay, so we'll tap him. We'll give him a shadow card. We'll reveal that shadow card. The, ooh, defending player must choose and exhaust a character he controls. Well, we have to exhaust this guy. And this guy gets one wound because it's four attack, three defense, and we do not have the enough power to fight back. We've only got three attack and he has three defense. So we are in a little bit of trouble. So refresh. So now we have two of these uh, dwarves, which I quite like. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to play this, draw two cards, then discard a card. So let's play that draw two cards and we get to discard one of these cards i'm going to discard you know what i'm going to discard one of the dwarves i really don't want to because there are nasty conditions but i'm going to do it anyway okay and i'm going to spend one resource and put out hem and math and i think i'm good now Okay, so we're gonna quest again with just for three. So we're already negative two, but we're just gonna to have to eat that. Bring out another card. Oh, there you go. When revealed, the first player attaches watchful eyes to one of his heroes. Limit one per hero, forced. If attached hero is exhausted at the end of the combat phase, reveal one card from the encounter deck and add it to the staging area. Not cool. So we're going to attach him to 
Glorfindel. Uh, hmm. Yeah, we're going to put him on Gimli, actually. This guy gets a Shadow card. We're going to tap him. This guy gets a Shadow card, and then we reveal it. It does not have uh, a Shadow effect, so we get another wound. Single wound. Book. And now we have to make a decision. I'm going to tap Hemmens Marth, and then I'm going to click on the deck and peek at the top card. It's a branching path. So that is a plus one. Also, we had to take a quest point off here because of goblin tunnels when this guy came out. So I'm going to do it anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack for three, four, five. We're going to pull out the location. We know it's a location. This gets discarded. We put two damage on him, so he is now killed. But because we're finishing the combat phase with him discarded, we have to reveal and add into the staging area another card. So bring out another card and excellent. That's probably the best card we could have hoped for because it has no effect on us because it's uh, it only affects the quest phase. So brilliant, that really worked out well. Okay. And then I'm going to tap you and heal two wounds. And Yabamo. Okie dokie. So I have a descendant here, which I can't use. But I do have four. One, two, three, four. And play out Northern Tracker. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And play out Aristor. Now his ability is awesome. Choose and discard one card from your hand to draw one card. So we're going to discard the Descendant and draw another card. Excellent. So we have, we have lots of threat reduction, but we don't need it yet because we want to pull this guy down. I still can't cast my Iron Heal guy, so hopefully we won't get much going on here, but we go quest, and I'm also gonna quest with this guy. That's gonna give us five, which makes us break even. So I'm also gonna quest with the Northern Tracker. That gives us six, but it also allows us to place one progress token on here. And now I draw the next card. Oh, Ziggle Mineshaft. Okay, so there is an action phase before you place tokens, which means we can activate this underground dark ability here, which is we raise our threat by five and we gain five progress tokens. And we're gonna do that. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and just get rid of this, bam. And we now plus one progress. So we'll put another token down. And now we are actually at 37 threat, which means this guy will attack us now because we're now equal to his threat level. So down he comes. So now that we're at 37 threat, we don't want to go much below this. So we're going to start using our threat reduction once we get to about 40 or 43 or something. So this guy now attacks us, Yablamo. I'm going to block with Elrond. He gets a shadow card, which we then reveal. Add goblin to the staging area. That's really annoying. So when a card's attached like that, you press the C button to detach. So he goes up to the staging area, but there's no extra damage. So he's attacking for one. He's defending at three, no damage. And then we just attack with Glorfindel and he only needs two damage, so he is killed. Beautiful. And now we've kind of got our engine working a little better now. So we're going to tap Hemimarth and peek at the next card and see it's another damn patrol leader. Now, see how it says revealed from the encounter deck? And this says add to the staging area. So that isn't revealed, okay? It came from the shadow card. 
so we don't activate this ability and lose a progress token. Okay, so that's that. Let's restart your blam. Okay, so for starters, we are going to use Estor's ability by discarding Hemsmarth and drawing another card. And we get Burning Brand. We definitely want to use that. But for now, we're going to be using the Iron Master. So we minus two resources and place him out. I'll put him down here. And because he comes out, we can discard a condition. So we'll get rid of this. And now it's time to quest. We're going to go quest with you, quest with you, and quest with you. That's a total of six. And I think I'm going to play this as well for zero. So that's one, two, three threat reduction. And we get another quest power there. And we draw the next card. Bam, which is another patrol leader. Man, unlucky. And we lose one progress. But we're still plus one. So we get that progress straight back. Now we have 20 and we have a 30. Both of these attack us. So let's get rid of that. If I press the tab, you can see, where is it? Shift, shift uh, S, shift S, deal all shadow cards. So shift S. Now what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna block This guy's attacking for three. This guy's defending at one. So he needs a five to be killed. Now the question is, how well do I remember this quest? Because I don't think there's many plus two attacks. So this is a plus one attack to Goblin. I don't think there's any plus twos. So I'm gonna use this to defend against this guy. Let's do it, bam! Okay, so that's no Shadow card, excellent. So he's attacking for three. He's defending at one. That gives him two wounds, but it also gives him two resources. Now this guy, he's gonna defend against the patrol leader. Uh, yeah, flip, oh no, wrong button. Oops, I actually sent it to the victory display. I pr pressed the wrong button there. So view, shared, victory display. Ooh, where did it go? Added encounter card to victory display and it is missing. So that is, that must be it here. Yeah. Yep, it is. So this was the, this was the encounter card. It has a plus one attack on it, which means he attacks for five. He defends at three. So that is two wounds on him. Nasty. Then we are going to attack back for three. This guy only requires three to kill, so he is destroyed. And then I am going to tap you and peek at what's next. Okay, the first player must discard one questing character he controls. If able, it cannot be cancelled. That's harsh, but it does mean that we know exactly what's happening in the staging area. So I'm actually good with that. So I'm going to tap you and heal two wounds. Uh, heal two wounds off this guy, sorry. And I'm going to call that a new turn. Yablamo. Finally, we have Unexpected Courage. About time, we are gonna spend two resources, place out Unexpected Courage onto Elrond. And now I'm just gonna go tap and tap. So basically, exhaust Elrond and Viala to reveal the top card of your deck. You can immediately play or put into play the revealed card for no cost if able. But because now we have Unexpected Courage, we can exhaust unexpected courage to ready our hero. So if I just tap those two cards, I get to play a card for free. You boink. Oh, and out comes Stargazer. Could that be any better? Excellent. 
We need four, five, six, seven to kill this guy. So that's three, four, five, six, seven. Which means I can quest with Glorthindel. I can quest with Aristor. And I'm going to also quest with the Miner. Now he doesn't actually do anything because he's got no will. But remember, the next card coming out is going to kill one of our questing characters. So we can kill the Miner. You can assign anyone to quest even if they don't have will. So that's that. Out comes the next card. It automatically gets discarded. We know about this, you bam. And we get three progress tokens. One, uh, one, two, three. Now we are gonna defend with Elrond. Get a shadow card and reveal it. No effect. This guy gets one wound. And now we attack for one, two, five, six, seven, reveal a card. It is not an enemy. So this guy does get his value to attack and seven is enough to kill him. An easy way to work out how much damage you need to do to a monster is just to add the red number, which is his health and the shield. So four plus three is seven. We're attacking for seven. So he is dead. Bam. Finally. Now we are going to tap uh, healer and I'm going to heal him. For, I, could, I should have done this last time, but I forgot. So it's going to heal him for one. But remember, this says heal one damage on two different characters. So I can heal the damage on him as well. And I can heal it twice because Elrond says gain an extra heal after the effect is cast, basically. After a character is healed by another card effect, Heal one damage. So everyone's healed. Let's tap you, peek at the next card. Okay, it's another monster. Now he doesn't go into the staging area. He just comes straight to me. So that's really annoying, but it does mean we only have two staging area to worry about. Okay, let's tap Stargazer and come over here. We're gonna click on these little three lines and go look at the top five. And this allows us to place these in any order. And luckily, we also have uh, a rune. So we're gonna put this here, we're gonna put this here, and we're gonna put this here. And then we're gonna go shuffle, uh, keep order, close and keep order. Yeah, bam, yeah, blonk. So we know that this guy isn't too much of a problem. I am going to play the rune. Oh, I forgot we can do the Viala now too. Oh, wait up, hang on. Let me just do that, the, the scry again. I'll do the top four. Look at top four. Yeah, one, two, yeah, no, I, had, I did it right. Keep order, excellent. So we draw two cards. I'm going to discard one of these masters and that is the end of Dwarven's runes. I'm then going to tap these two and play the next card, which is Faramir. And now we have questing power up the wazoo. So we've pretty much won the game. We just need, there's only, we just need the resources to take off here and we're, and we're good now. So I'm going to spend two resources from here. Uh, yep. And place out Burning Brand. And now we're ready to rumble, basically. So we're going to go quest with Glorfindel. We're going to quest with Northern Tracker. We're going to quest with Estor. And what's this guy? He needs four, five, six to attack. Three, four, five, six. Uh, this guy should have been discarded. Okay, so we're just gonna go like that. So we're questing for six, which is plenty. 
bring out the next card. I'm confusing myself here. Boom. When revealed, it engages the last player. Now, in a solo game, you are the first and the last player for targeting. So he comes straight out, gives us four progress. So that's five plus one, two, three, four. We have now beaten the gate. So we press V for victory points. Yoink. And off it goes. And out comes the first hall. Bam. Now also, we did go with the Northern Tracker. So this guy gets another token as well. Now note that this one does not say immune to player card effects. So we, we're not going to travel here. We're just going to use the tracker to get past that. But we are going to... Actually, because the goblin came out of the deck, we would have lost one progress token. So let's just remove that. But we are going to travel here now. Bam. Okay, so we're going to defend with Elrond. He gets a shadow card, but it's automatically discarded because we have Burning Brand, which means it's cancelled. Attacking for three, defending at three, no damage. And then we attack for three, four, five six and we need six to kill so he's now dead as well okay so we are going to tap him see what's next each player must exhaust a character and discard the top card of his deck if able if the printed cost of the discarded card is equal or is equal to or higher than the remaining hit points of the exhausted character discard the exhausted character Okay, this shouldn't be too much of a hassle because we have Stargazer. So let's go bam and look at the top five cards. If the printed cost, well, this guy's a one cost, so that's what we'll use. So we want to go like so. So we're going to draw Unexpected Courage, which you don't need to do. So we're going to draw Vivalia. Then we're going to play for free the Northern Tracker. And then we're not going to use F Store's ability. Oh, then we're going to use S Store's ability to draw Unexpected Courage, uh, to draw Stargazer. Okay, that's how we're doing it. And then this guy is next. I think we've done that correct. So the next turn we've planned out, we're going to draw Vivalia. And then we're going to use the value who's actually out on the table to play the Northern Tracker for free. That's going to make this card the very next card. Then we're going to use this guy's ability to discard Vivialia and draw one card and get this into our hand, which is going to leave this card as the next card available, which will then be used in this trigger. Okay, so I think that is right. So let's keep order. And reset. New round. Yeah, bam. Okay, so we are going to one, two, and play this guy out. So we now have two trackers. And then I'm going to use this guy's ability to discard this card and then draw a card. And then I'm going to quest. And we need five six seven that's what we want to quest for so we've got three four five six seven shall i quest with him as well yeah let's quest with this guy as well bam so we're questing for nine but because of this guy's ability each character that i control gets plus until the end of the phase okay so Basically, that is one, two, three, four. So he gets another four quest uh, points. So we're going to draw the encounter card, your blamo. Okay, so each player must exhaust a character we control. We're going to exhaust Gimli in this case. Discard the top card of our deck. So if I just press D on the top of my deck, will that discard that card? Oh no, D is draw. Oh well, whatever. It's Hammersworth, which has a cost of one. So it's a X to discard. 
And because the discarded card is equal or higher than the remaining hit points of the exhausted character, which is not, we discard the character, which we don't. So, boom. That does nothing. So now we have a quest progress of 11. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. And this is also cleared. And we also, we didn't even get that because we also had two Northern trackers. So this would have gotten two tokens as they exhaust, which means that would have been cleared, which means you actually have a two extra tokens. Sweet. And out comes this guy, sucker. Bam. Now we can't actually, even though we've got seven points here, we can't continue until we pass the bridge. So we're still stuck in this little zone. Actually, the Northern trackers apply their tokens as soon as they tap. So that location would have been cleared and the new location come out before the actual progress was counted. Instead of being minus two, it would actually be plus one because even though we cleared a minus two location, we replaced it with a three location. If I'm making sense, because I've been drinking my scotch while I've been editing, we actually should be one less progress token. But spoiler alert, it's not gonna matter. And we've basically got our engine working. The only thing we haven't got out is our acceleration here, which we're gonna get pretty soon. Let's peek. That's very easy. And then let's scry. Oh, keep water. Let's scry. I always, I always click the little eye icon instead of the little three lines to bring up this screen. We finally have descendant in the right spot. So we're gonna keep that. What do we wanna do here? I think, so we'll draw this guy. We'll play this guy for free. We'll discard her to gain this, and then that'll be the next card. So we want to put this here. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So let's keep that. Keep order. Okay, let's refresh. I hope I remembered to do that correctly. We play for free. Or do we discard with Aristor? I can't remember. I think we play for free. Yep. And then we discard this and draw a card. Okay. We're going to quest with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that gives us another quest point. So we're questing for 15, because it's one, two, three, four, five. So we get plus five when he taps as well. Okay, so out comes the card. It's still plus nine, and this guy gets two progress tokens from the tracker. So we're still plus nine, so that's, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we just do it again. You blam and you blam. So we peek. It's another location. It's annoying. And we get to browse the top five. And we still have not got anything of use because what, what I'm waiting for, I've got these cards that allow me to move all these resources, but you know, we just can't right now. It's so annoying. I'm going to place this over here. So we're going to draw that. Then I'm going to play this for free. Then I'm going to use Aristor to draw that. And that's going to be our three deep hook and keep order. So refresh. So let's tap these guys, play this for free. 
Uh, let's put all our questers up here. And we'll put all our utility cards down here. Okay, so he gets another <laughs> another uh, questing token, by the way. And here we go. So this is going to be a little bit annoying. So, okay, so what's going to happen now is the patrol leader is going to come out. So we've got to make sure we're prepared for that. So we need, what's the patrol leader again? He is, uh, four, five, six, seven, he's seven. So we need seven attack. So we've got three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so let's use two resources from this guy because you can use, because now he has the, uh, the resource icon as well as being able to pay for allies. So we're gonna spend two off here and put out another unexpected courage. And I think we're good. So that is quest, 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 quest. And that's a huge amount of questing power. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're questing for 19, which is just bonkers. But what's interesting is after he commits, this automatically gets placed. So he gets two tokens here and two tokens here. This only needs three to be activated. So bam, that goes straight to the victory pile. And then this thing says we can now pass it. So we'll just discard that. And we're into 2A. The skeletons of dwarves and orcs lie undisturbed, but you have discovered no recent signs of the dwarven colony. The sound of scampering feet travels to your ears and you move in that direction to investigate. There is a patrol of goblins marching in a loose formation through the shadows. When revealed, each player must search the encounter deck or discard pile for an enemy and one has to be the patrol leader. Now, I'm pretty sure there's only two patrol leaders, so I'm gonna get it from the discard pile. And forced, after an enemy is revealed from the encounter deck, discard it instead of adding it to the staging area. So this is a super easy, we only need 11 to get through here, right? And we're probably gonna do it in one go. So let's, draw the encounter card we have a progress of seven uh may as well cast this thing here it gives us plus one so i'll just put it temporarily on this guy so that gives us plus eight and minus three fret one two three so that is actually we don't need that do we yeah so i'm not going to do this i'm going to go one two three put that back Put this back in my hand and remove this because this thing will automatically clear when we clear it of enemies. If there are no enemies in play, we immediately go past. We don't have to worry about it. So we have got plus seven and that's plenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm then going to travel to there this guy is going to attack me. I'm going to defend with Elrond. He gets a shadow card, which we reveal. It's gotten, it doesn't matter what it is because we have burning brand. So that gives us one wound, which we're just going to tap him to heal. I'm then going to untap him using the other an unexpected courage. And then we attack for three, four, five, six, seven. Reveal the next card. It is not an enemy. So this guy is now killed. Bam. Easy. And then we just tap our utility cards. Okay, it's a goblin. And as it says, after an enemy is revealed from the encounter deck, discard it instead of adding it to the staging area. So we don't even have to worry about this guy. And look at the next five cards. Bam. Okay, so let's draw him. 
we'll use the power to draw him and then we'll use Thingo to cast that. Keep the order and refresh. Yablam! Okay. So we are going to use Estor's power to discard Burning Brand and draw the next card. We're then going to use, we're going to tap the ring. Oh, I just discarded the ring by accident. We're going to tap the ring and tap Unexpected Courage. And we're going to play out the greeting for free and get one, two, three, four, five, six threat reduction. Actually, there's no enemies in play, so we should advance this straight away. If there are no enemies in play, immediately advance to the next stage. So let's get rid of that. You have captured a member of the patrol and pressed the wounded goblin for information about the dwarves. It gives a nasty laugh and with a mouthful of blood spits, Balan can be found in the chambers of records. It can say no more. So let's flip that over. The Chamber of Records is on the seventh level of Moria. The way up is treacherous and you are accompanied by a sense of unease and vague dread. Heroes do not collect resources during the resource plays. If the players defeat the stage, they win the game. So we only need 12 to win. So the scrying of the deck would have been the same. So we're, we're fine. So the only difference that makes is that I would have not done this. I'm just going to put the greeting back on top of the deck and we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm just going to check the top four cards because we've already drawn one. And what I would do is have the descendant there. Keep order. Now we have just, we just have to run to win basically. So we want quest. Quest, 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 quest. I'm pretty sure this will be able to do it in one go. It's going to give us 17. Oh, and this guy. So we have one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12, uh, wait up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So let's give him another bunch of tokens. And we're also going to spend uh, one... Uh, one, two, three, do the greeting. One, two, three, four, five, six. Did I do Aristor? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'm not in the position to do it. Um, what else am I going to do? Should I do anything else? I don't really need to, do I? Oh, well, may as well. Let's go another one, two, place out another horse and commit it to the quest which also adds another token here <laughs> so we're questing for 33 we bring out the next card bam before we calculate we're going to tap unexpected courage to untap him and then we're going to tap viala to tap him again and play out the next card, which is Descendant, which puts two damage on him. He is discarded. We have two trackers. We have two more progress here. So that is discarded. And we now have 33 power. We need, we've got 12 plus five. So we only need 17, which means the game is over. And that's pretty much playing this game in Dragon Cards comes out pretty nicely if you ask me and that my friends is a victory bam assuming i did everything correctly <laughs> now you'll note that it sort of records or everything you've done and there's also patreon links to gain extra 
bonuses like customizations, you know, change textures. They're nothing fancy. It doesn't change gameplay. It just gives you, gives some money back to the guy who made it. Anyway, so that is Dragon Cards to play Lord of the Rings online for free. Hope you guys like it. Remember, if you like the game, buy it. And I'll see you guys. Bye.